back to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lay. And we're back at the fifth quarter. In the Huddle continues on some of these great radio stations around the state. WDKM and Adams Friendship. KFIZ in Fond du Lac. WFBZ in La Crosse. WTSO in Madison. In Marshfield on WDLB. In Racine on WRJN. And in Sparta on WKLJ. It's time now for the Granite Peak Ski Area email segment. Granite Peak Ski Area in Wausau is the tallest and largest ski area in Wisconsin with 700 vertical feet and 74 runs. Granite Peak offers terrain for all levels of skiers along with six terrain parks and tree skiing glades. Right now you can save big money on season passes and multiple day lift tickets by visiting SkiGranitePeak.com. Great specials now at SkiGranitePeak.com. Can I send in an email? What's that? Can I send in an email and win that? You probably could. That sounds like a really fun trip. That is a fun trip. <laughs> is, is, uh, would that can be in your together? contract? You think you could downhill ski? Can uh, we go together, Tish? Yeah. We could do that. Nice like romantic two. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, All right. Justin. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, first question is from Leaf and Sparta. It goes into the intricacies of the 3-4 defense, but I'll kind of reward it for you offensive guys. What's the biggest difference going up against the 3-4 defense versus a 4-3 defense of an offensive lineman? Well, I think for, you know, you got three big defensive linemen in there. You don't really have a true, you know, defensive end. It's mostly it's basically like three defensive tackles in there. And, uh, you know, I think that it's – I think, you know, I, Josh could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think guards would like playing the 3-4 better because they're uncovered almost every play. Yeah. But, uh, nice. you know, in the 3-4, you got uh, you got quicker pass rushers out on the edge. You know, you got uh, those speedy outside linebackers. So they can – in the 3-4, they can do a, a little bit more uh, in terms of blitzing. Um, you know, like our defense, you, you know, see the, you see the different things they do. Uh, they can bring a little bit more at you. How, how does how does Green Bay's compare from seeing it in camp and that to, to some of the other ones that are out there? I know it's just a year and a half into a, the three four D. Their base looks. I mean, they're pretty much the same. You know, you got three D linemen. One's covering the center. Two are covering the tackles. And then you got that two outside linebacker. So, uh, you know, when we, whenever we go against a three four team, you know, we feel really comfortable playing them because you know that's what we've seen the whole off season and all through training camp. So, uh, you know, we don't have to work too put in too much extra work during the during the week to get ready for it. I think the main difference in our defense and uh, other defenses is that Dom likes to do a lot of different things. Uh, you know, he brings a lot of blitzes and, 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 you know, has a lot of different looks with the guys, and, and they do a lot of different things. All right, we'll get to the next question from Christy and Kakana. Are the linemen the smartest guys on the team? And if so, who's the uh, smartest one of the bunch and why? I, I would definitely say yes. I would say 100%. Yeah, I would agree. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, truthfully, to answer it, um, you know, mentally, um, the one with the most work is, is the quarterback. You know, I would say 100% of the time. Uh, they have to put in the most work, uh, you know, extra work on Tuesdays. You know, they stay later. They come in earlier. Um, but I would say, you know, second to the quarterback, uh, mentally, I think we have, you know, one of the toughest jobs. You, you know, you not only have to know what you do, but you, you have to be alert for adjustments. Um, if they bring a different look that you haven't seen, you have to uh, adjust to it. And, uh, you know, you have to communicate it. Uh, you know, we have to tell the center sometimes what to do. Um, you know, he's got to tell us what to do. We've got to listen to the quarterback and make the adjustments. So uh, I, would say, I would say probably, you know, quarterbacks and then, then the linemen. I would agree. S smartest of your group? I think me personally. But. <laughs> <laughs> say TJ's a close second. I would, have, I would have to say Josh is first. I mean, he's, he, he could not look at the playbook for a whole year and still, you know, know what, everything he's supposed to do. So, uh, you know, we, we got a lot of smart guys. Scott's a smart guy playing center. I mean, playing center, you got to know a lot of adjustments and you got to read guys when guys go in motion and you got to re identify guys. So, yeah. Scott, uh, it, Scott makes it nice in there. He, he does a, a hell of a job in there for us. He, you know, he puts in the extra time. And he makes it easy for us. Yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely challenging uh, mentally. And to back you guys up, too, the offensive linemen usually one of the highest scores on that Wonderlick test, too, coming out of college. So yeah. they're not just blowing hot air. You ever, uh, you ever tried not studying your playbook for a whole year? I, I haven't looked at my playbook the whole season, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> All right, we'll get to the, uh, the next question here. Uh, about resemblances coming from Steve and Nina, I'll kind of reword it for you guys, but uh, 
If you could pick somebody to star in uh, your role in your life story as a movie, who would uh, be playing your part? Steven Seagal. It's pretty good. Yeah, right? Dead on. Like, he kicks ass. I mean, I like it. Like, <laughs> can I say that? Can I say that? You just did. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. I would say... SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> right? Big square. I don't think I'm yellow, but <laughs> I would say probably, I don't know, Will Ferrell maybe. That's I mean, he's good. a big goofy dude. Yeah. And who, would, who would play Bill just out of uh, you two guys' uh, opinion? Um, <laughs> oh, wow. oh, boy, I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything? No, I don't. No. Uh, I'm disappointed. Who's bald? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Give me a few minutes. All yeah, right. we'll, we'll, we'll come, come back to It'll come to you just that, burst yeah. it right out any time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to you, you just shout it out. Oh, I will. All right. We got time for one more, Bill? <laughs> uh, yes. All right. This one's coming from a Vicky in Appleton. You guys don't use injuries as an excuse, but uh, have you seen a scenario on former teams where you've had as many guys banged up as you do right now? That's a great question. And No, I haven't. I was talking about this last week with um, I don't even know who, but uh, – I haven't been a part of a team, and I haven't seen it where as many guys have gone, you know, on IR, and you know, we've had as many guys. I haven't seen it. Um, I was talking to one of the trainers. We had 50% of the guys in there doing treatment. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous right now. I'll give you a hint. Al Roker, Willard Scott. I'd be a good weatherman on TV, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big Stick news to radio, monster, buddy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming back with more. We'll have our winner back after this on the Woodward Radio Network.